This is Supercar Racing. They're 100 horsepower racing carts with incredible power to weight ratio and downforce. They might be small, but they are rapid, holding several outright lap records and being faster than Formula One cars at some circuits. Now, they only have 250 cc engines. That's a quarter of a litre, yet they produce 100 horsepower. They're inline twins and are water-cooled two-stroke engines. You can see the massive radiator behind the driver. And being two-stroke means they create incredible power with a smaller displacement, as the engine is firing twice as often. The engine's rev to 14,000 RPM and run through five or six speed gearboxes. Most of you would have been in rental go-karts at your local track. Well, they weigh a similar amount to these supercarts, but they only have five or 10 horsepower. But these supercarts have 100. But one big difference is that they don't just brake on the rear axle. Similar to higher levels of racing, they have one disc on each corner of the cart with super sticky slick tires with a similar soft compound to Formula One. But other than that, the chassis is actually very similar to a normal cart. There's no suspension and your arse is only 15 millimeters from the tarmac you're driving over, giving the car an incredibly low center of gravity, meaning that they achieve an insane level of grip through some corners. Now, I know, because I've driven one, but I'll explain a bit more about that later. Now the cart weighs 220 kilograms with the driver, but at 100 miles an hour, they create almost 100 100 kilos in downforce. So they create half their weight in downforce through quick corners like cops at Silverstone. And that is absolutely incredible. This comes from the nose cone floor and the rear wing. And the drivers can adjust the height of the nose cone and the rear wing depending on the circuit or their driving style. And so they have incredible cornering performance, but because they are so small, they have very little drag, which means that they can get up to 140 miles an hour and even 150 on some of the longer circuits. Meaning that you can be flying along the straight with no suspension at 140 miles an hour. Just think about that. So unsurprisingly, the drivers wear leathers to protect themselves somewhat from a crash. And because it's a car, it's actually safer to not have belts. If you were to crash, you want to get away from the car itself. A bit like in motorbike racing. If you have a crash, you want to go that way. You want to go that way, correct. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt, they are terrifying machines. Let me quickly interrupt you to tell you about 22, today's sponsor. They help you improve your brain health, boost your focus and strengthen your immune system with their Lion's Mane supplement capsules. Now, Lion's Mane are small mushrooms found in parts of North America, Europe and Asia and are classified as functional food, providing health benefits beyond their nutritional value. I actually bought this supplement for myself about three months ago and I can really see an improvement in my mood and focus at work. 22 pack all of this goodness into two small capsules, making it super easy to take them every day. And like I said, I bought this off my own back and I've been using them for a few months now and have felt incredible benefits. So make sure to check them out with the link below. And as I mentioned earlier, I actually drove one of these on our other channel, Overdrive. And I want to preface this by saying that I've driven some pretty scary cars. 80s F1 cars with absolutely massive turbos and newer cars like the 2012 Lotus F1 that has insane levels of downforce. Not to mention loads of 90s F1 cars that have incredibly stiff suspension and are very difficult to drive. And I have to say that the supercar is the single scariest thing that I've ever driven and by some way. With the proximity to the ground of the car and the vibration of a 90s F1 car, this thing is like nothing else. And then on top of that, in the back of your mind is the knowledge that if you have a crash, there isn't all that much protection. This is something that I could genuinely hurt myself in. So yeah, it's not like jumping into an F1 car that has a really strong tub and has been crash tested. The car, other than your leathers, has absolutely nothing. And most of the time, you're not racing on FIA circuits that have acres of runoff. Yet, having said all of that, the cart was absolutely incredible and I really love driving it. Carts are just as direct as a Formula One car. They give you absolutely incredible feedback as a driver. You can feel everything that the car is doing. You can feel it dancing around underneath you and that sensation is absolutely amazing. And with all that power and speed, you have to work really hard to keep it pointing in the right direction. I always say that Formula One cars should absolutely terrify you when you first get in them. And the supercar absolutely did this to me. When you drive a car that scares you a little, 
little bit and then tame it with good driving, the satisfaction is amazing. And after 20 or so laps in the car, I felt like I started to understand it. Yes, there was a lot of time that I could have saved on the brakes, but in the corner and coming out of the corner, I had the car pretty much on the limit. In some of the slower corners, the supercar would understeer because it does have a solid rear axle like any other car, meaning that it pushes the front across the track in the tighter corners. But if you got the car set in the corner and started to get on the throttle, it would rotate quite nicely. And once you got flat on the throttle, the thing would absolutely fly out of any corner. But I will say, I drove this supercar at Rockingham, which is a big open track with quite a lot of runoff. And the supercar series does race at tracks like this, such as Silverstone, Snetterton and Donington, tracks that have more space and more runoff. But they also race at more old school circuits like Cadwell Park, Alton Park and even Darley Moor, which is a bike racing track. These are circuits that are narrow, tight, twisty, have big curbs and not very much runoff at all. And I'm just talking about driving a single car on the track at one time. Some of these races have grids of up to 60 drivers. So I wanted to share with you some of the best supercar footage that I found online. And I promise you it's absolutely worth watching. These guys are just insane. First up, we've got this start from Alton Park, really quick, tight, twisty, dangerous UK circuit. The guy's starting at the back, 12th position. And the amount of movement here at the start, I think is just amazing. But also the thing that fascinates me here is the respect that the drivers give each other. Obviously they know they're taking part in really dangerous motorsport. And so they're giving each other more space than you might do in a car. Bear in mind that these things, even around quite a quick circuit like Alton Park, they're as quick as a GT3 car, things like Ferraris and McLarens. And I just wanted to watch this clip because of the amount of action, the amount of overtaking that's going on, but also the respect that they're giving each other. Look, he sent one at the inside there, but the driver on the outside is given the width on the apex so that he doesn't get pinned in the side, basically. Other thing to notice here is that the carts aren't using any of the curb. Obviously, you can take curb in a car because of the suspension, but in a go-kart, it's just gonna fling you off the racing line and actually cost you a load of time. I also wanted to show you a supercar on tracks that we actually know. So here's a supercar from the French Championship at Paul Ricard, and look at just how fast they are. Drivers starting from about 10th position on the grid, rolling start, uh, which is obviously different to Formula One, but as soon as they go, the carts just light up being so light and having 100 horsepower they just absolutely fly again lots of respect at the start of the race i think that's fascinating actually and i, I really love that about the supercar drivers you can see that they're driving the cars on the limit the cart's having a little bit of a slide here and there but they're giving each other loads of space on the track down the back straight at paul ricard flat from here down to the chicane look at the speed rising 200 kilometers an hour 210 up to 220 now onto another circuit that we know well, Hockenheim. This driver's third position on the grid. And what I want to show you is just, just how quickly this driver drives. He's absolutely on it from the get-go, as you'd probably expect. Coming into turn one at Hockenheim, sends it in, misses the curb, big slide straight away. Now, the repercussions of having a big slide like that, if you go out too far and you're all over the curb in one of these supercars, I can't imagine what that will do. Now he's diving down on the brakes, going into the hairpin, locks the rear tires up, absolutely sent it into there, but also gave the driver lots of space on the apex. Now, look at the rear view camera, look at the absolutely massive toe the driver in second position gets on the driver in the lead just sweeps by. And that means that the racing in supercars is always super close as you get these clumps of cars together that can't break the toe. It's almost getting back past the driver in front again because he's got back in the driver's toe. This is from a driver called Sam Moss. I think he's one of the leading drivers in the UK. I've seen some of his videos before. Here, uncharacteristically, is at the back of the grid. We're at Cadwell Park, which is one of the best tracks in the UK. So he's got a cracking start here. But what I want you to watch is just how on it he is from the beginning. Coming up through this elevation, which is much more significant than you might imagine, giving the other drivers lots of space, trying to get in their toe, coming through here. It's obviously a, a grey day here in the UK. When I'm in a race car, I never imagine crashing. I always just fully focus and, and I'm racing, but I struggle to imagine in one of these supercars that I wouldn't be thinking about shunting and driving slightly differently. Maybe it would be different when I was actually in it full of adrenaline, but I watched this on board and I'm looking at how close the barriers are. I'm looking at where the other carts are and also thinking that if you do have a shunt, there's no protection there around you. Maybe that's why these drivers are giving themselves lots of space on the track. Sam's overtaking in this race is absolutely fantastic. Using a bit of curb there actually, surprisingly, but it's quite gentle curb. 
sends one up the inside here, but all nice and safe. He's so composed with his driving, absolutely on it, tiny little movements into the steering wheel. And I just wanted to fast forward to this bit where he's following a car. He's made his way up the grid now. I don't exactly know what position it is, but it's towards the front of the pack. Look at how closely he's following this car in front, but also being very careful. He's not just absolutely sending one up the inside. He's being patient, he's being careful. He's waiting for that opportunity. Now I'm going to fast forward to where Sam actually overtakes the number 25 car. Got a good run, coming through the chicane, goes up to the inside, and there you see it. He gets the overtake done in the braking zone. He's not leaving it until they come down to the apex, which is often one of the bigger mistakes that you see from drivers, mainly amateur drivers. They put all the responsibility on the driver being overtaken to see them, but actually the best way to overtake is to get it done on the straight or in the braking zone before you turn into the corner. Now, all we've watched is good overtaking and good starts, but sometimes in supercars, it does go wrong. And just before I went out in the supercar that we drove at Rockingham, Callum, our other presenter on Overdrive and the producer here at Drive61, showed me this bit of footage. I don't know why he did that. Why are you showing me this? So this is it in Adelaide, supercar, supercar race on a street circuit, which is crazy. <laughs> oh, and the driver goes off, hits the wall, and then somebody else goes off, Two other people go off. They're both on fire. I mean, th th this this is insane. Just I, I I just don't understand. If anyone knows why this race was put together, please let me know in the comments because this seems like madness to me. And here we have some footage from supercars at Silverstone Grand Prix circuit in 1986. And as you can see, the carts haven't really changed all that much. They're still 250cc. The basic layout is the same. It's a cart with bodywork, right? Look at these two drivers absolutely on it, following each other super closely, sitting in the toe around Silverstone in the 80s. It's interesting to watch Silverstone back then with not too much runoff, no tarmac runoff zones and hay bales rather than tire walls. And then, and then just look at this toe. You've got six carts together. And this is what I mean when I say that you can't break the toe. This is why you get clumps of carts together. Because you it's like the Tour de France. You have the, the, the driver or the rider at the front just breaking all of the air up for the drivers behind to sit in. And everyone basically takes it in turns. I just thought it was fascinating to watch. And to be honest, it looks like incredible fun. There's nothing better than being in a pack like that, jostling for position. Now, I have a question. I've actually been asked to race one of these carts this year. Is that something you'd like to see? Here's a video from my first drive in a supercar. You should watch it and then subscribe to our other channel, Overdrive. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.